when you're using the Mark V in the saw mode, it's important that the miter gauge slots be absolutely, positively parallel to the rotation of the saw blade. Everything depends on this. If you guide a piece of wood against the fence, it's got to, the, the uh, fence is set up parallel to the slot, so it's got, to, it's got to be parallel to the blade. If you're using the miter gauge or a sled to feed the wood, the, uh, the miter gauge, of course, follows the, uh, the, the slot. It's got to be, the slot's got to be parallel to the, to the blade. Uh, if this isn't the case, what will happen is that the, uh, uh, the wood will touch the blade and it will actually be pulled away from or, or uh, towards the fence or, or in one direction or the other on the micro, on the, uh, uh, the miter gauge. If you're using the fence, uh, this can be extremely dangerous, because, uh, especially if it pulls the wood in towards the fence. It, it, it then pinches the wood, and uh, the, conditions are <laughs> the conditions are exactly right at that point for a kickback. Uh, and a kickback is an extremely dangerous thing to happen. Uh, we, we emphasize that you've got to keep your fingers away from the blade, but we don't emphasize the dangers enough of a kickback. When I was teaching at the University of Cincinnati, we had a hole in a concrete block wall behind the table saw from a kickback. No kidding. Um, fortunately, it didn't hit the student. The student was standing to one side of the, of the table saw or the other, just like we taught him. You should do the same. Um, to align uh, the, the, uh, the table saw, I'm going to begin stripping it down here. Um, you're probably wondering just how far off the, uh, the table can be. And um, I'm going to show you that here in a minute as soon as I get rid of the saw guard. Buster. Now I'm going to get two pieces of wood here to illustrate a point. Now I had a couple of uh, pieces of uh, a two by four here somewhere, and I don't see them. Huh. <laughs> Shop gremlins, guys. This is what goes on all the time. Never mind. Okay, let's, uh, as, you, as you well know, oh, there they go. <laughs> Thank you. That was, uh, that was Drew handing me that. You got to see his, uh, his hand there just for a moment. I'm going to, uh, we're going to pretend that this is a saw blade, even though it is. And uh, we're going to pretend that these are the teeth on the saw blade, even though they're not. Uh, I'm going to put one tooth back here, this is the tooth that's revolving up out of the table, and one tooth back here, and this is the tooth that's revolving down into the table. This is, there's only two teeth on this saw blade. Uh, very cheap. The, uh, uh, as you feed the wood past, into the, past the teeth and, and uh, then past the saw body, uh, it cuts a kerf, and the space between these two pieces of wood um, is, is the kerf. And it goes back here, and then it has to pass back, the, uh, back uh, by the uh, back tooth. Now, if it's just a little bit out of adjustment, no big deal. It will hit the back tooth, and the back tooth will cut the kerf a little wider, and it will be a little wider as it goes, as it goes past. It'll still make it, and, and it'll, it'll do just fine. However, if the, if the table is way off, and it goes past the front tooth, and then hits the body of the blade. The body of the blade does no cutting, and it will force the piece of wood uh, this way, and it will start to bind in the cut. The um, so uh, when you ask how far can the table be off, it's very simple. The table can be off the distance from the uh, plate or the body of the saw blade to the 
outer edge of the tooth. If you were to mark the, the uh, width of the teeth and the width of the plate, subtract the width of the plate from the width of the, te the teeth and divide by two, you would get that number. Usually, for, more, for most uh, saw blades, it's around uh, 20 thousandths. So that means that this table, uh, the, 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 uh, the slots, can be out of parallel up to 20 thousandths of an inch over the diameter of the saw blade. How do you measure that? Well, um, I am going to use, for this demonstration, a dial indicator. Uh, this particular dial indicator has been mounted, um, let me bring it in there so you can show, show it, it has been mounted so that it will ride in the slot of the table saw. That. And uh, and the uh, the feeler fits against the uh, the saw blade the saw blade or in this case we're going to use the tip of a tooth the very very tip put that right there now th that's the tooth I'm going to be using so I am going to mark that and with a pencil right here. Every saw blade is, is a, um, a little, there's a little wobble to it. It doesn't revolve in the, the, the uh, body is not in the same plane as, the, as the, it's revolving. And it can be uh, up to five thousandths out. So you want to use the same tooth to make this measurement. Uh, that, way, that way you'll eliminate the wobble from your, from your, uh, uh, from your uh, calculations. Okay, I'm going to put this in. And I'm going to set the dial uh, to zero. Let's see, they, Drew, they can't quite see this, I, I think. They widen that just a hair so they can see the, uh, the, see the uh, dial indicator. There you go. Okay. I'm setting the dial. Clamping it down. Now, I've got that on zero. Notice that I'm, I'm pushing in against the slot. Um, that takes, you know, there is some slot here, a slop here. Actually, let's see, it's about, it's about five thousandths. And there's that, uh, by pushing the end so that the bar on the uh, miter gauge, or the dial indicator mount, is against the edge of the, of the uh, slot, takes the slop out of the measurement. Now let's take that same tooth, and let's rotate it to the back, and take our measurement again right against the tip. Okay. Uh, this one happens to be within two thousandths. Uh, and, and the reason for that is that uh, we just we just aligned this thing, not, not more than a, an hour and a half ago. But we're going to do it again. Let's pretend it's, it's off more than twenty thousandths. Um, let's set the dial indicator over here for a minute. Now, <clears throat> you have to loosen uh, the bolts that hold the table uh, to the um, uh, to the uh, uh, the mounting posts and the and the trunnions. Uh, there are four of these, and once you loosen them, the table will adjust. Will will actually uh, uh, pivot around just a few degrees, but enough to enough to to uh, set the alignment. Now, normally, what you have to do is loosen the two bolts on the left. Okay, that's that's my left, your right, of the of the saw blade, and then tilt the table and loosen the two bolts on the right side of the the saw blade. But for this demonstration, I'm going to turn the I'm going to take the table out, turn it upside down, so you can see um, what uh, what I'm doing. Who's going to set up the, um, the camera for this? So that we can get close to it. What? Oh, okay. okay. How, how do you how do you want this? Just like it is. Oh, in the back side. Gotcha. All right. All right. Drew was giving me a little bit of, of stage direction here, so I can so you can better see what uh, what I'm doing. All right. The four bolts are here. Here and then 
on, on the back side here and here. And um, there, I'm going to turn this around just for a little bit. And you can see right uh, on this one right here how you can't not access that bolt with the, uh, with the table in there with the post straight up and down. So let's, uh, let me get, you'll need the, um, the big Allen wrench that Chopsmith has sent you. And it's also a good idea to have a wrench as well. And I'll show you that and show you why in a minute. We're going to loosen the two left bolts first. And I normally really tighten these up so that so that uh, they uh, don't move around on me. So and so I need the wrench to get them loosened. Give me a little leverage. Um, okay, I did those two. I'll loosen the table. Take this. Loosen the table tilt. Take it over a couple degrees. A couple degrees. I'm at 45 and loosen these two bolts. Now, this back right bolt, I'm going to loosen it, okay, and show you that, that this will move back and forth just a fraction of an inch, enough for you to align it. But then I'm going to take the back right bolt and I'm going to snug it up, just, just snug, finger tight, that's all. And um, the reason for that is that if I were to put this back on, on and try to align it with all four bolts loose, the table would just slow them all around. I couldn't, I couldn't get it... Uh, I couldn't get it in line, uh, or I'd have a very tough time with, with all the slaloming that it was doing. Uh, by, by snugging up this bolt right here in the back right, it becomes a pivot, and the table just pivots. It's much easier to align. All right. One last thing, and this is really important. If you, if you put the table back in, and um, tighten up the table tilt lock. You're going to be squeezing the trunnions together. Then when you tighten the bolts, the trunnions will be squeezed in against the mounting posts. And it will be very tight. In fact, you're, you'll hear some really loud squeaking uh, when you try to tilt the table. To prevent this, loosen, get, the, get it nice and loose. Loosen the table tilt lock and get, you, get yourself a um, five thousandths gauge, like a dollar bill. A, uh, a dollar bill, yeah, the paper is about five thousandths of an inch thick. Uh, Jim McCann, a good friend and a good craftsman who works here, he uses a twenty dollar bill because he says it makes him pay closer attention. Uh, so let me put this twenty dollar bill in between the ribs of the mounting post. There we go. It will work. There we go. And the ribs, or the ribs of the mounting post and the trunnion. Okay, now I'm going to bring it to square. And I'm, I'm not going to get this table lock real tight. Just snug. That's enough. Uh, by the way, if you don't have a $20 bill, uh, Shopsmith will sell you a, um, uh, an Andy Jackson uh, 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 alignment gauge for $29.95 plus $7.95 shipping and handling. So, let's take the table. Now, bring it down to where it, it is just a fraction of an inch off the headstock. Tighten this up. See how I'll pivot back and forth. Let's go over here. 
let's find the tooth that we've marked. Okay. It's somewhere here. There it is. Okay. Find the tooth that we've marked. Measure here. I got, I'm on number 20. 20 thousandths, and measure here, I'm on 18. All that futzing around has taken this off a little bit. Now we're going to bring this back to the front, and I'm going to move it. I'm going to split the difference between 20. Okay, that's on about five. Let's let's see. It's more than split the difference, but let's see what what we get anyway. Nope, it's uh, when I push in, it's on eight. It is splitting the difference. Okay, that's zero now. And that's six. We need we need to do this one more time. So let me. Not too much. There we go. Yep. I'm just bumping the sides of the table here. We go on zero there. And we're on. Okay, a little too far. One more time, guys. Ah, that's it. Okay. We're on three thousandths here, and we're on five thousandths here. That's a two thousandths difference. You can't get much closer than that. If it's within, if it's within five thousandths, it's it's going to it's going to be absolutely cool. So, get rid of the gauge here again, so we don't accidentally knock it off the table. Um, find our um, uh, big. Uh, put it in here somewhere. Uh, put it over here. Yeah, I'm looking for this. The um, the the big uh, wrench. Now I'm going to tighten down. Uh, you can see me, or at least you can see the top of my head. I think I'm going to tighten. Whoop! That moved. Okay, it moved, guys. Ordinarily, I'd have to go back and do and do the gauge all over again, but we'll just continue on here. Um, I will snug up this bolt. Now, I'm not tightening it completely. I'm just snugging it up. This is the front left. And then I go to the front back. Snug that up. Raise the table and tilt it carefully now because your Andy Jackson alignment gauge is in there. Snug up the right front. And the right back is already snug, so, so I don't have to do that one. Now what I'm going to do is loosen the table tilt completely, carefully draw out my $20 bill, put it over here, and now I'm going to tighten these in a different order. I'm going to, uh, I'm, not, I'm not going to um, tighten this up or tighten up the, uh, the lock yet. I'm going to go over here. This is the back, the back right. Get my wrench. Tighten this down. Drop the wrench. You know that's going to happen. Okay. Come back, come back uh, to 
I'm going to come diagonally across to the right or to the left front. I know you can't see behind here, but I am tightening the, le the left front. Now, come out and do the left back. And the last one is the right front. Okay. Now, we know that this moved on me at some point, but just, uh, just for giggles, let's uh, see where we are. Go down here. Get my gauge. Here's my mark tooth. Okay, I'm on 30 here. And when I go back to here, I'm on <laughs> I'm on 50. Okay, so I would have to do this all over again. The reason the um, the reason that you tighten the bolts in uh, two different orders is just to, to uh, try to, to evenly distribute the pressure as you're, as you're bringing the bolts up against uh, uh, the, uh, the trunnions. Uh, it really doesn't matter as long as, as you, you increase the pressure on each, on each bolt in, uh, in some sort of a, a different pattern on each time you go uh, around it. Snug it up first and then tighten it with the, with the wrench. Uh, the, uh, the table won't, uh, won't move on you. And uh, that's it. That's all there is to it. Uh, I'm going to go over.